So as you all have probably heard, Next 14 was recently released at Next Conference that happened this month, and I've been kind of burned out and also fighting a cold, so I haven't really been making as much content as I usually do, so I'm trying to get back into the groove of things, and I figured, hey, this is a great opportunity to make a video about me talking of the new features or performance increases that Next 14 provides over Next 13. All right, so the first thing they announced are turbo pack speed increases. Honestly, I haven't looked too much into the turbo pack. I think it's something that runs under the hood when you do like a NPM run dev on Next that helps compile your code and host it. I guess if I was a good content creator, I would go and read about it. Honestly, I don't really care. The thing that really is important to me is that the Next JS dev server runs a lot faster. Um, I've made complaints on Twitter. I've made complaints on my YouTube channel where the dev server with Next.js 13, I've seen it just randomly crash after X amount of saves. I've seen it take up to three, four seconds to refresh a page after I save my VS Code editor. So I think these speed ups are really good and I'm happy that they're actually focusing a lot of time on just doing performance tuning, making this stuff fast because us developers were really feeling the pain. I think this is probably the most complained thing that I've heard other people complain about is that like the dev server is slow. So going off of that note, I'm happy that they didn't add any new features to Next 14. There's no API changes. It just goes to show that they are listening to our feedback and they are trying to make stuff as fast as possible so that we can actually be productive in our day-to-day -day work. The second thing I want to talk about is the server actions. So these have been released for like six months now. I don't even know when they released them, but they were under an experimental feature flag. Now they are stable so that you can actually just use these without having to go and change your next config. And this is great for me as a content creator because I just felt dirty talking about an experimental feature when I make content. Because honestly, I want you guys to build like production ready applications. And I don't think using experimental things is a great thing you should have in your production application. That's just my opinion. But now that these are quote unquote stable, I think that I could start making more content about this and feel good about teaching how server actions work. I will say I have used server actions on a lot of side projects and I do like working with them. It feels very similar to TRPC, but with less overhead. Server actions are just built in the Next.js and it's really enjoyable using them. We've used server actions on the Code Racer project that my community has worked on. I've used server actions on my YouTube chapter generator. I've used server actions on a third uh, application I built for a client. So overall, I think the experience with server actions makes it a lot easier to just write full stack applications. Some people have some doubts and reservations about, you know, where you should be hosting your API. Like, should the client be able to invoke a function or should you be using a REST API? I think more traditional developers would say you should probably just use a REST API. But I do think this does give a lot of developer experience. Um, it, it's really nice. But overall, I mean, like these things have been out for a while. So if you don't know about them, probably go read up on them. But a quick little overview, um, I'm just glossing the surface of it is a server action allows you to basically take a form, you put this action keyword here, and you can put a reference to a function. Now the function right here, this is a server action. When it has this async key keyword, and it also has this use server string at the top of the function, this tells Next.js that this is gonna be a server action. What Next does behind the scenes is it's going to abstract this behind an API call. So that in the front end, when you submit this form, it's actually gonna do a post request to your page Next is going to figure out, oh, this is an actual request to a server action. And then it runs some code here. And this code is going to run on your backend. So you can do authentication, authorization. You can, you know, read or write data from a database. You can do fetch requests. Anything that you can normally do in a REST API, you could do right here in the server action. And as you can tell, it re removes a lot of the boilerplate that you typically run into with dealing with REST APIs, where you have to, like, define an endpoint, link that to your function, um, well, I guess that's not too much boilerplate, but it's just nice that you can just write the function here. And if you know that the function's only ever going to be used on this page, then you don't have to go and like separate it. It's nice. I've been using a lot um, in my side projects, so I'm kind of happy that this is stable now. Now, the thing that was kind of confusing for me was this, this third feature, partial pre-rendering. So this is, they put preview. I'm not sure what preview means because there is a feature flag you can turn on to use it. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't just put experimental here. Um, but what this does, um, and this is kind of abstracted away from like the developer, we don't have to care about this, but let me just show you what this does. Let me get rid of the server action stuff. 
So in the next config, there's a PPR flag that you can turn on or off. By default, it is off or false, I should say. And if it's false, basically when you run it, the build command with Next.js, what this does is it runs through your code and it sees if you have any dynamic data calls. So that means, are you accessing props somewhere? For example, like props.search parameters, are you trying to render that out to the page? Are you passing that to a component that does something with it? Are you trying to grab cookies? For example, I'm grabbing cookies from the server component here. Um, and if it notices that you're doing any type of dynamic data fetching, when you build the application, Next is going to mark this endpoint as a dynamic endpoint. Notice this Lambda character here. It says servers. Let me go ahead and move that up. It says server rendered on demand using Node.js. So what this means is that when you deploy your Next.js application and someone hits your home endpoint, that has to potentially do a cold start on your Lambda, and then it has to process your request, and then it sends back the data. And every time someone were to hit this endpoint, assuming that it's not cached, it has to do that same process, potentially cold start a Lambda, and then send back the request after it runs through generating the HTML from your React server component. So if I comment this out, let me just do a rebuild and kind of show you so you guys are all on the same page of what's, what this change actually means. So notice here, this is a open circle which means that it's a statically rendered um, endpoint. So what this means is that when Next.js compiles this, it's going to take this page and it's going to generate a static.html file basically, which you can host and it load much faster for the users compared to having to hit a Lambda, have that potentially cold boot, have it run through the code, and then finally return the HTML. Instead, this could be just a static cached asset that you host on a S3 bucket and you know, cache it in a CDN. So when people hit this endpoint, it's super, super fast to get back the data. So I showed you the two scenarios when it is potentially dynamic. And if you were to turn this flag on, this is what they're talking about here, this partial pre-rendering. When I turn it on here, what this does is it's going to run through the code. And at these suspense boundaries, let me just go ahead and run this real quick. At these suspense boundaries, if your top level root component is not using dynamic data. For example, in this case, we're not, we're not using cookies here. We're not using anything else. It's going to go ahead and treat this as a pre-rendered static HTML with dynamic server streamed content. So because this server component here is accessing cookies here, it's going to go ahead and create a statically generated HTML file for this page which again gives you the benefit of bypassing cold starts on lambdas. It'll be really quick to load in the user's browser, but behind the scenes for these dynamic suspense boundaries, it's going to go ahead and do React um, streaming. So that these kind of run behind the scenes on your cold booted lambda potentially, and that data will get streamed over. So it's a little bit of performance optimization. Honestly, as a developer, you don't need to know about it too much, but I do think it's going to help your pages load faster and in appear faster to the user. You're not just going to have like a white screen that's sitting there. You're going to have a, you know, a skeleton is what they're calling it, like a skeleton or a shell for all of this page minus the stuff that needs to load. So if you have like a fallback here that has like a loader, I'll just say like loader, I guess people call it spinners. What this will allow to do is the shell will basically have the spinner already there in the page. And then behind the scenes, when this component finishes doing its cookie requests or database requests, that'll get streamed over. So a lot of information. I don't know if I even explained that correctly, so feel free to call me out in the comments if I screwed that up. But I think that's a really interesting little optimization. I wish they provided information about like how much faster does this actually make anything. I don't see any metrics anywhere. It seems like a little, little pre-optimization, maybe the shave of a couple of milliseconds. Honestly, is it that important? I don't know. But it seems like it's pretty cool. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is learn Next.js. So they, they actually put some effort into creating basically a full course for someone who's new to Next.js that walks you through all of the different things that you're going to need to know when you're trying to build out a Next.js 14 application. Um, so let me just go ahead and click resume learning. They got a complete walkthrough with 16 chapters. And uh, if you're kind of brand new to Next.js, you can actually go through these. They kind of give you a good walkthrough of like, you know, what is Tailwind, what are layouts, pages, and it's a lot more condensed and it reads well compared to like just going to the docs like they had before. I think it's good to have some type of documentation that holds your hand 
to walk you through how to like learn a new framework, um, especially prior is kind of confusing just reading through the docs. And as you can see here, chapter 10, they do talk about the partial pre-rendering. Um, so if you want to get more information about that feature flag, you can read through here. They got diagrams, stuff like that. They even have like little quizzes as you're taking the, the what is this, the course, the tutorial, whatever this is. They have little quizzes that just kind of quiz your knowledge. I think that was pretty cool. Um, and then they have summaries at the bottom. So last thing I want to talk about is if you're on Twitter um, and you follow Lee Robinson, he's a really cool guy who works at Vercel and he is the VP of Developer Experience. Uh, the last thing he mentioned here is these are on the roadmap for what's going to be next for Next.js. Okay. Now I'm excited for number one, simplifying caching. I think the caching mechanisms that exists in Next.js, I think they were too overly aggressive with caching everything. And from a developer coming in, it can be very confusing to understand why your stuff is not changing when you save files, understanding why you're seeing old stale data as you're like navigating between pages or clicking the back button in your browser. So I'm happy to see that this is like on the roadmap. I have publicly on my YouTube channel complained about some caching issues where like you do like a math.random on a server side rendered endpoint and you were to navigate back and forth between those pages, it never reruns that math.random call because the client side routing in Next.js has a cache built into it. And there's no way to like configure that cache. It's kind of set to 30 seconds as a default. And let me kind of share with you a GitHub issue that uh, it's like one of the highest commented GitHub issue here that a lot of people are really confused about the caching when it comes to the client side router. Um, but basically, like the client side router caches things for like 30 seconds, and there's literally no way to configure that. And there's like tons of people on here like complaining about this lack of configuration, which you can configure like the server side caching, you can configure all this other type of caching. But for some reason, the client side caching is set to 30 seconds because that's how Facebook does it. And they think that your application should work like Facebook. So they don't give you a way to really customize that. So they had this giant thread of like 300 comments, and then it got moved to another discussion over here. Um, about caching and like th this is a huge write-up there's a huge write-up by Tim he talks about like all the different use cases and edge cases of how people may potentially want caching to work it's a lot of stuff honestly I'm not gonna read all this because I don't care too much but as you can tell this is a big issue and I'm hoping that they will address this in some way to make it easier for developers to like configure the client side uh, caching Anyway, I don't know why I'm pointing this out. I guess I'm just, I'd be excited because this is like the one of the main issues why I decided to like get off of Next and try Remix for a while is because like they just went overboard with caching everything and they didn't give you a way to opt out of it. So like when I think about a server-side rendered application, I think about every endpoint giving the fresh data every time a user requests it. Next says, you know what, that's not how we're going to do it. In our application, stuff is going to be cached for 30 seconds as you navigate forward and backwards in your browser or you're trying to revisit a url that you've already seen and it, it's kind of annoying in a lot of different ways because some applications have very specific needs for showing the latest greatest data all the time and when you start using server actions or yeah, server components there's no way to like work around that so uh, i'll stop complaining about that i'm just hoping that there are some f uh, fixes in the future that they address that makes the caching not so aggressive all right, uh, that's all I got. Just wanted to go through these, um, kind of give you my thoughts on them, show you a little bit about how to turn on this partial pre-rendering feature flag and explain kind of what it does. Other than that, if you guys uh, think I missed anything, leave a comment, let us know so that we can all learn from this new release. And uh, yeah, feel free to join my Discord if you want a place to kind of hang out and talk to other developers. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.